It's January, I'm cold, but I'm out working today and I wanted to talk to you about some goals that you could set for your lawn care business this year. I talked to you about a little bit about what I'm doing, but this should be helpful whether you're starting out in the lawn business or whether you are a veteran of the industry. Today's video is sponsored by Graham Spray Equipment. You see on my truck behind me, the 400 gallon split tank, that is my Graham Spray Rig that I use to spray yards. If you want to get in weed control and fertilization and need a spray rig, go to GrahamSC.com or give those guys a call. Everybody is fired up about today. Let's get started. One goal that I would try to do if I was really trying to grow a lawn care business is you can just put a, a number on like how many customers you're going to get and things like that. But I would look at it like this. How many relationships can I build? I tell people one of the things I did when I sold my last line business, I moved to a new city, had zero customers, a wife, three kids, another kid coming soon. And, it, you know, a little bit stressful, but I, I think that's also motivating um, when you're in that kind of situation. So what I did, I went on Facebook in the local community Facebook group and searched for the keyword lawn, L-A-W-N. I began to uh, find all these people who asked for lawn care in the past, and I would read the comments and find people who... Uh, who people recommend it and i started calling on those people and say hey i'm jason and uh, i just moved to town i've been in the lawn care business for a while and i'm starting up a weed control and fertilization business uh, i realize you're mowing grass i didn't know do you have somebody you're currently sending your customers to for weed control and fertilization and through doing that i was able to build quite a number of good relationships that have lasted for years and that still send me a lot of referrals so what I would say is set a goal on how many relationships can you start in the community because it's not that's not the only thing that grows a lawn care business. I mean, there's other ways, but I, I do think, especially in smaller towns, relationships still mean a lot. And so if you have relationships with the people that are influential, uh, particularly influential lawn care businesses that can send you in turn. So if you're mowing grass, I would get to know the weed control companies, If you, especially the, the smaller local ones. And if you're spraying yards, I'd definitely get to know the, the local mowing companies. Another thing you could set a goal on is you, you can do direct mail and just send out thousands of direct mail. Sometimes that gets expensive, returns not great. Uh, and can go through a budget pretty quick, but maybe a, a more effective thing you could do is saying that I'm gonna do kind of the five around or seven around or whatever you wanna do. So that's where you have a particular customer already have this house. And when you go there, you're gonna put a door hanger, postcard, whatever on the five houses that are around there. So the neighbors uh, on either side, the, the person across the street and then two, two houses uh, a diagonally across. So you could do seven, go, you could do more than that. But uh, and one thing that I've been hearing people have success with is being able to put the price right on the door hanger or right on the postcard. I like that too. I think that that uh, eliminates a step because if somebody comes and they see uh, a lawn care company and they're like, in their mind, they're thinking, well, that's probably going to be you know, too expensive or, or they don't want to change. But if they see it and the door hanger looks professional and the price is right, they're more likely to give you a call. So you could set a goal this year of how many times you're going to do the five rounds and have more strategic marketing next to a, a neighbor that you already have versus just broadcasting a bunch of direct mail, which is not a bad idea either, but that can get expensive and the return can be kind of low if you have a, a low marketing budget. Another thing I would try to do is, and this is something I, I practice a lot, but I'll, I'll listen to business books. I, I've got an Audible subscription. I go back and forth. I have, I use Audible a lot, let's just say that. And I'll download some books and listen to those while I'm out working. So I'm out spraying or maybe whatever, you got your piece of, I, I'll do that. And so if you have some business development books, because what I find oftentimes that separates people in the lawn care business is not like they're necessarily their skill of driving a lawnmower or using a string trimmer or whatever, or even weed control. There's some that people are more knowledgeable than others, but often it's just your business sense. And so if you can challenge yourself from a business perspective, and not just a lawn care perspective, I think uh, it's gonna help you. There's podcasts, you know, my, my friends uh, have podcasts related to the lawn care industry. You got people like Brian Fullerton, you got Paul Jamison, 
uh, Jeremiah Jennings, you got Caleb and uh, Brittany Allman do the uh, their Kid Contractor podcast, Naylor Taliaferro. They, they have knowledge to share, but then they also bring on some really good guests that can share a lot of specific information for our industry. But I would challenge you to do that, but also uh, also look up some business books that can help you and challenge the way you think about your business because the business side of it is the often neglected side and I'm not so sure that's not the more important side. We, we wanna do excellent work in lawn care, but sometimes the business can be a struggle for people. Another goal you could set this year was to grow your equipment. Now I'm big on not just going and just buying equipment because you need equipment, you like equipment, uh, maybe need was the wrong way, but you, you like it, you just wanna get some more toys and you end up spending all your money on equipment. I don't think that makes sense. But if a piece of equipment can put your business in a more strategic situation, then it makes sense. So does the piece of equipment make sense to give you a, another opportunity to make more money in a different part of the lawn care industry? Or can it make you more efficient the, in in what you're currently doing, you know, for instance, if you ha if you ride around with a 42 inch mower and you got a 60 inch mower and you and you're doing big flat yards, well, that's going to make a significant difference. And I would think even if you had to finance that mower, it might make sense depending on the situation. For people like me, they're doing weed control and fertilization. When the when I got a ride on spreader sprayer versus a push spreader, that made a huge difference. Not somewhat in yeah just productivity, but big time in just how much I enjoyed what I'm doing. I'm not pushing anymore. I'm riding. And I love that. I don't think I've pushed a spreader in a long time because I have a ride on spreader sprayer. So if you could think about equipment, what equipment can I use that's going to help my business grow, expand in a new uh, area that can make me more money or make me more efficient? But again, not just going out there and buying equipment just to have more equipment. I, I think you gotta really strategically think, is this piece of equipment not just gonna pay for itself or sort of pay for itself, but can I make many multiples over the value of this equipment in a fairly short period of time? If so, then it makes sense. If it's just gonna be something that, that you like having and, and you make a little bit of money, but you don't, it takes five years to pay for the thing based on the revenue you're bringing in, probably not a good business decision. And the last thing that I spend more time thinking about now than I used to, and I would make a goal with your health. Now, I'm not saying you got to run the Boston Marathon or anything like that, but uh, I'm trying to be more conscious of what I eat. And I'll tell you, my son and I started running uh, back in the fall about six months ago or so, and we, we've taken a little break over the winter. But uh, that running has paid off big time in the, the way I feel when I'm out working. So I'm really happy about that. But... I've become more and more convinced that uh, somebody told me that you need to think about yourself 10 years from now. So what I'm doing right now, how is it going to impact me 10 years from now? So if I can take care of my body, not only do I feel better right now, but it, it's going to help me in the future. And I, I heard some else say, he said, you know, he's convinced that if you take time to go exercise, if you spent 30 minutes working out, let's just say, then you'll actually get more done in a day when you didn't work out. It's just something about that get your blood flowing, you have more energy, and you actually have a more productive day if you take time out of your day to exercise. Uh, it don't even have to be 30 minutes. I mean, I think it would be 10 minutes, and you'd still uh, giving you more stamina, more endurance to be able to be more productive. So these are some areas that I think you can think through for your own business, how they're going to apply for you. Well, I got you on to mention the 2024 Lawn Care Life Conference. It's been a big success so far as far as registration sponsors. We've got four sponsors on board right now, which I'm really excited about. Chris, uh, Ferris, the Landscape Bookkeeper, and also Yard Book. And registrations are going well. That event is February 23rd, 24th. To sign up, go to LawnCareLife.com. There's a link at the top of the page that says conference. You can check on that. It's got the details. It's got a great list of speakers and really excited about the event.
The cost is $229. That includes all your meals as a Friday night and Saturday, but you can use the code 2024. Just put the numbers in 2024 when you go to register and that'll save you 10%. And if more than one person signs up, two or more people sign up, you'll save an additional 10%. If you want to get into weed control and fertilization like me, go to LungCareLife.com. Check out the Weed Control and Fertilization Academy. A lot of people take advantage of that and I get tons of feedback on that as well. Thanks a lot for watching the video. We'll see you in the next one.